Mo money, mo problems. True, or is it just a cheap way of saying, I don't need to earn money? So today's topic is about more money creating more problems. And it sort of relates to the saying, money can't buy happiness. Now, whilst that is true, that is you can't go to the shop and say, g'day, can I have $50 worth of happiness, please? The reality is that money buys freedom in many ways. I think about, I guess, my childhood when there wasn't much money around and some of the stresses and lacks of freedom that it created. That is, we didn't have the freedom to go on holidays, buy good food, buy good clothes, um, deal with emergencies when they came up so easily. And conversely, those who had money had the freedoms to deal with all of that. A while ago, I shared a story about when my good mate Dino, the Wonder Dog, got a bone caught in his throat and he was in trouble and I had to take him to the vet. And the vet explained that he needed emergency surgery and it was going to cost over $3,000. Now, I guess the vet was used to people not being able to pay that kind of money. And he was kind of geeing me up to, to kill the dog, as in to put him down. And um, he was very professional about it. but. There was no question about it. It didn't matter how much it was going to cost to fix Dino. I was going to pay it. And that wasn't just because of an emotional connection to my dog, but because I had the fiscal resources to do it. I could easily pay that money. Now, I wasn't happy paying three grand, but I was happy having my dog. So in that sense, money, money definitely bought me happiness. And I also think about the times, I'll share another story time with Uncle Adam. So I drive uh, a luxury car, and I have driven luxury cars for the last, uh, probably about the last 10 years. But before that, I was driving the good old R30, R31 Skyline, which is the last Australian-made Nissan in Australia. And it was a good car, but it's not the safest car in the world, with no electronic stability or airbags or anything. A very simple car. Now, as years went by, I bought... I love Beamers, I love all cars, but Beamers are my thing. And I typically buy the sports Beamers, so the M series. And as a result, besides, I guess, kind of looking good and feeling good to drive, they are immensely safe. And one day I was driving home from a dinner and I had a girl in the car and we were chatting along, no, no alcohol, no drugs, nothing silly, just, uh, just driving home and it was night time and suddenly someone swerved onto my side of the road and I don't mean a little bit I don't mean drifting out of their lane I mean the car was completely in my lane heading towards me at at least 100 kilometers an hour and I was doing the speed limit at 80 kilometers an hour so there was a combined speed of 180 kilometers an hour now if we had collided there is no doubt in my mind I would have been dead. Now, this is probably the closest near-death situation I've ever had, excluding, let's say, uniform situations, because they don't really count, because in certain types of uniform, dying is part of the job. But those near-death situations aside, this was the closest I ever had come to death. And I was in a 5 Series M Sports at the time, big wheels, big tyres, sport suspension, German technology, and without thinking, I swerved off the road into a paddock, essentially, at 80 kilometres an hour, zero time to brake, there was no time, this car was just right in front of me, and I remember driving straight into this paddock at 80 kilometres an hour, completely off the road in a sports car, not losing control of the vehicle for half a second, just completely in control the whole time. After the car had gone back, I, or gone past, I noticed the car behind me also had to swerve off the road. And then the car kept going and I swerved back onto the road before I hit a light pole. And there is no doubt in my mind that if I was in any lesser of a car, I would have been dead. So when we talk about money, not buying happiness or money creating problems. 
whether the money had been saving my dog for a, a bone that he had caught in his throat or from saving mine and the girl's life from being able to swerve off a road like that and recover without pretty much without any problem whatsoever and not even the car even though it was a sports car didn't have a single scratch or issue with the suspension essentially the money I was able to pour in that six-figure car was able to I would argue save my life the money was also able to save my dog's life and the money is also in the future I hope able to save anyone's life that's part of my life and it gets into trouble and they need my help and I can help them out on another side note I actually went to a funeral today and it was the funeral of quite a young person and whilst I'm not about to go into the details of it health certainly came into it and whilst we're young it made, it made me think this funeral it made me think that when we're young we spend all of our health gaining wealth and then when we're old, we reinvest all that wealth into trying to buy back our health. So really keep that in mind when it comes to what should you invest your money in? Invest it in your health. Invest it in good insurance, good food, get a gym membership or make sure you use, and make sure you use it. Don't just get the membership. There's someone at my gym I see who comes to the gym and they just sit by this um, spa the whole time. They don't actually go to the gym. They, just, they go into the building and just sit next to the spa. And play with their phone are they going to the gym well technically yes are they improving their health health well at least they're walking to their car driving to the gym then walking to the spa and doing something as opposed to just doing nothing but that aside when it comes to money complicating your life when I was at uni I had zero money well I had enough to live and enough to drive my first car was a Gemini and I had enough money to survive through university, but life was simple and life was good. I didn't have any mortgages, no car loans, no real investment portfolios except for the golden shares I've had because I've always really been into that. And everything was very simple. Then as life goes on and you build more wealth and buy more properties and more shares and more investments, things get more complicated. And you might look at the life of minimalists and you can see how minimalists, they, they in fact have money and they just get rid of all of their possessions. The light's really bad, sorry. They get rid of all of their possessions and live the simple good life. And you actually see these minimalists living quite happily. They could easily afford a big house, several houses, cars, and all the luxuries, if you will, that money can provide. But they've actively chosen to ditch all of that so they can live the simple life. And when there are less working parts in your life, it becomes simple and you can enjoy higher levels of happiness. Now, some rich people will actually go on retreats to get away from any technology and any rushes of the, the modern life and the city life, cars, traffic, planes, electronic devices. It, it all stacks up and it gets a bit too much. So when you've got lots of assets and lots of things to manage it in itself creates stress and the grass is always greener on the other side that being that when you look at some rich people and you think wow they've got their life so easy they don't have to worry about anything well that's not always true sometimes they've got a lot to worry about I, I myself managing a reasonably large property portfolio well large comparative to what but several properties many properties and it takes a lot of time in tax and it takes a lot of time in accounting and it takes a lot of effort in making sure everything is kosher with essentially with cash flow and making sure they're growing and making sure they're being maintained now of course you can get good property managers of which I do have for many of the properties and that makes life easier but then you've got to manage property managers because property managers don't manage themselves so a good one will and if you get them you should hold on to them but property managers are like all other humans. Some are good and some are bad and some need more guidance than others. So no matter what type of service you employ as a rich person or someone with large assets or um, many moving parts in their life, if you 
hire a nanny as an example, let's say you've got kids to look after, you hire a nanny, well then you've got to manage the nanny. If you hire a cleaner, then you've got to deal with the issues of cleaners. And you can see, when you speak to some rich people, I remember when I was living in uh, Malibu, I was rolling with some immensely rich people. And some of the stuff that they used to talk about, they were stressed out about their housekeepers, and then they were stressed out about their nannies, and then they were stressed out about their gardeners. So all these luxuries that they had of hiring people to do, essentially maintain their high, high style life, was creating more stresses because it was another thing to manage. If you take Warren Buffett, you can see this multi-billionaire, he still lives in the same house he bought with his wife decades ago. So he didn't buy a 12 bedroom mansion with two swimming pools and space for 15 cars, even though he could easily do that. He could easily buy several of those. He didn't. He sees money, and this is just my projection onto how I see he sees money. He sees making money as, as the game. His game is to make money. That's his job, making money. His the focus in life isn't really getting the Lambos and the big houses. His focus in life is working hard at what he does and the outcome of what he does is making money. And this is where it comes to when you're making money in life, some people are working just to make the money, but some people are working to, in fact, enjoy the process of making money. And it goes mainly for investors. So are you living to work or working to live? If your job is to, uh, we'll go with a doctor, some might argue that they become <clears throat> a doctor so they can make lots of money, that's great, but others may argue that doctors become doctors because they want to look after people and they want to help people. And let's go with the latter example. Doctors are striving not so much to make money, that's the byproduct of what they do. What they're actually striving to do is help people, or at least I'd like to ho hope that's what they're in that for. Uh, certainly not all of them. And if you make money as a byproduct, what you do with that money will create or reduce the stress in your life. I've certainly found that the more money I earn and the more investments I run, the less time I have and arguably the more problems I have. Now, problems are subjective in themselves. There's some problems that you want to have. So uh, I'm always very strict with my tax. And unfortunately, or fortunately, check out this problem, I earned so much money last financial year. And despite the massive amount of tax I have legitimately paid and put aside, it appears I may have to pay even more tax. And it was quite funny, my accountant, you know, I spent hours with him and he goes, because I was quite stressed about it, and he goes, mate, this is a good problem to have. And it's you think, wow, my, my problem at the moment is I'm earning so much money that I may have a tax bill, even though I've paid more than six figures in tax over the last financial year, I'm still going to have to possibly pay more. We're still auditing everything I've done and going through all the books. And I'm very strict with my tax to make sure I never want a tax bill and I never want to have any trouble with the ATO and I'm a believer in doing the right thing with tax. But sometimes, we have the problem of earning too much money that even when you've put all that money aside and made those contributions, you've now got this new problem. And this new problem is, I've got to pay more money in tax. Now, some might look at that saying, well, what type of problem is that when you know, you've earned all this money over the year? That's a good problem to have. And it goes back to mo money, mo problems. Sometimes that is true. Sometimes the more money you earn, the more problems you have to deal with. And sometimes the less money you earn, the less problems you deal with. Ultimately, what I found as I get older, when it comes to earning money, try and keep everything simple. Unless it's that game I was talking about. Unless you're one of these investors where the game is to make money and that is part of the, the joy of what you want to do. Like for doctors, they like to help people, we hope. If your joy in investing is making money, then it shouldn't actually be too stressful. It would actually be U stress, as in EU stress. And EU stress is a good stress that can help us live longer. Uh, if you can hear gunshots in the background, nothing sus. I'm just at a gun range and I'm going for my weekly shoot. And when you earn more money, if you 
put that money into the wrong things, you're not getting the good stress, the EU stress, you're creating different types of stresses. As I get older, as I, say, as I was saying, I actually find that I try and simplify everything. I got rid of some of my cars. I got rid of a lot of the property I have, as in, as in the houses that I own, but a lot of the stuff that I have in the houses, cleaned it all out. With a big garage is trying to get as empty as possible just to keep ex only what I need. It keeps me mobile. It reduces my insurance premiums. It makes it easier in everything in life. Uh, with my investments, I've got a lot rid of a lot of my traditional stocks and kept it very simple in my portfolios so it's much easier to manage. And then also when it comes to friendships, I've noticed that many people are trying to help everyone. They're trying to keep everyone happy in their life. And as a result, they sometimes focus too much on the wrong people and that creates another stress in itself. When you get money, you think you can help people and you can. And philanthropists um, are a proof of that. It's a really hard word to say with braces, by the way. Philanthropy. The, the problem is that, though you actually find that once you actually start helping people in your life, they actually become, they come to expect it. Not all of them. But once you give a handout, I'll give an example. I bought someone a car once and I, uh, it was a new car. I gave them extended warranty and I gave them lots of rego and everything. It's basically, here's a car. You don't have to pay anything for a year. All you've got to do is service it. And of course, they didn't service it, which voided the warranty. And then they came back to me asking to fix brakes and fix this and fix that. And it was amazing because before they had all those expenses with their other car that was more expensive than this new car that had an extended warranty. And once I actually gave them this car, uh, it was just another handout. And then also when I've helped other people with lending money, it then becomes the norm. And then they're not paying back the money. And then that creates another type of stress. So if you cut out all those aspects of your life, you've still got money, but you can redirect that money into the right places as you see some of these really big players they don't actually just give it to a charity sometimes they create their own charity and the reason why they do that is that they're making sure there's there's actually three reasons they're doing it one tax write-off that's a different story two they're building their brand so if you've got the bill gates foundation you're building your own brand but three they're making sure that the money that they're donating is going to exactly what they want it to go to and not being burnt in some random well, White Ribbon is an example. White Ribbon may have been a good cause, but you can see White Ribbon is a charity or a good cause, apparently, that has gone completely bust because the money was being squandered and not being used properly. And just because a charity has a label on it, like White Ribbon or Blue Ribbon or Green Ribbon or any ribbon, it doesn't matter. If the money's not being used properly and you've donated to that charity and that charity goes bust, just like White Ribbon has, You've just wasted that money and that, that, that's quite stressful, especially if you believe in what you're doing in the donations that you're giving. Anyway, I've been a little bit over the shop here because I'm, I'm quite distracted with uh, the funeral today and being at the gun range and the poor weather and the topic of mo money, mo problems. Money doesn't buy happiness, but if you treat it with respect, reduce your debt and focus very uh, fairly on the people that you want to look after and not just start sprawling this money around uh, like your God because you can't help everyone. You may want to, but you can't. You'll actually find that the stress that you have is reduced because when people need your help that you love and if you need to help yourself, you will have the money there. And believe me, it is much easier and much better having the choice to save your dog's life or drive your car into a paddock, knowing that it's not gonna be a huge issue, as opposed to having to put your dog down because you can't afford it, or wrapping you and a loved one around a light pole because you weren't driving a car that was safe enough to deal with those type of emergencies. I'd really like to know your thoughts. Does more money create more stress? Have you been poor and happy? Vice versa, have you been rich and unhappy? and then switch them both around. Have you been poor and sad, or happy, or rich and very happy? All right, it's terrible weather for shooting, but uh, bullets don't discriminate <laughs> against the weather. Thanks for listening. Happy investing. Stay happy, stay safe, 
and I'll talk to you next time.